Snake Artist features encounters with hazardous or dangerous wildlife. Bill Flowers is a trained professional. We do not encourage anyone to attempt to recreate or reenact any of these activities. No animals were harmed making these videos. Okay, a way of improving your art. If you know a subject really well, you can usually draw it without reference. Sometimes you get a little bit wrong. Today I'm going to show you how to fix that. Hi, I'm Bill Flowers and I'm now talking to the more advanced artists out there. Those who can just draw straight from their mind, straight onto the page. Now that's fantastic and that's sort of a goal that you should aim for. But you should always be pushing yourself a little bit further. Today I'm going to show you a technique that I use to improve my art. So what I'm drawing here is my idea of what a tiger snake should look like just from my mind without actually looking at any reference. So marking it in fairly lightly, this is what I believe a tiger snake looks like. I've not used any reference here whatsoever. I'll darken that up. His eye. I've got a nice bulge there. There'd probably be a shiny bit there, I imagine. That's where their venom gland is. They've got a shield shape right in the middle of their head. They've got an ocular scale there, which I think is divided up here. I'm just going to have to check that out. They've got like a, a cross there, with four scales there. And then here, oh, I'll break that up. There's a scale there. It's good using a mechanical pencil. I've got a little rubber in the end. And then there's that funny slit that the tongue comes out of there nasal scale, I think they might be broken up there but I'm not quite sure, so this is just going from memory this is how I remember a tiger snake so what I'm going to do now to improve this drawing is I'm going to look at a real tiger snake and use it almost be like my own teacher doing corrections, I'm going to correct this drawing based on a real tiger snake Oh, there he goes. So, looking at those corrections. Start with. For quite a while now, I've been drawing these four scales pretty much even, but this actually comes up into here like that. Shaping those scales in a bit more of a trapezius, the more narrow there and wider there. So that's one thing I've learnt already. Uh, they were split. I think this one here was a bigger scale coming out of here, like this. It was striking at me, so I didn't get a real lot of what I was hoping for, but I got a fair bit of information. And this was probably swollen out a bit, and this also. But then again, this snake wasn't in the best of moods. So that cheek was really swollen out there as well. So even knowing that means that every snake I'm going to draw from memory now it's going to have that slightly more corrected scale at the front there. The next time I draw a tiger snake, I might notice something else about it. And then I'll incorporate that into the next one. Because as you draw, 
and you're fairly confident with drawing, you can draw a lot from memory, a lot from your imagination. But it can, if you're trying, going for realism, it can end up like a Chinese whisper. It's a process of evolution where you have your original where you've drawn from real life, but then the further you go without looking, the further it evolves. And as I say, like a Chinese whisper, it becomes well, not that accurate. In fact, it becomes much, very much distorted. Now, this tends to be a person's style, and there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, it's good to sometimes go back to the source, go back to what you were looking at initially, and uh, picking up a few other things that you may have missed the first time around. It's good observational skills. So there you go, that's how you can improve your art. I would recommend that rather than coming out with a live deadly snake like this, maybe you should sort of go to the zoo. Uh, draw an animal that you think you know really, really well. Go to the zoo, have a look at your drawing, draw it very lightly, and then just sort of go over it and say, okay, yeah, well, this could be better, that could be better. And that's a way of learning. Trial and error, best way to learn. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll see you later.